Well, welcome to today's talk. It's Sunday the 4th of February 2024. Now, in my country, we have something called Prime Minister's Question Time, where members of Parliament can ask the Prime Minister questions. Now, this was the British Prime Minister last Wednesday, the 31st of January, not 2021, but 2024, just a few days ago, Prime Minister. Let me be unequivocal from this dispatch box that COVID vaccines are safe, Mr Speaker. Now, I know that you'll be struggling with credulity at this point, so I don't want to quote the Prime Minister out of context. So let's look at the context now. Mr Andrew Bridgen asks the question and Richie Sunak, uh, the Prime Minister, answers the question. Let's just watch the whole exchange. It only lasts for a couple of minutes. Andrew Bridgen. Thank you, Mr Speaker. More than two decades ago, the then Prime Minister, Tony Blair, misled this House by promoting and endorsing the Post Office Horizon IT system as perfect, <coughs> protecting the large corporation that created it and causing untold harm and damage and misery to innocent people. Can the current Prime Minister think of anything he has promoted in partnership with huge businesses as safe and effective, which has ultimately harmed the British people? And will he use this opportunity to correct that safe and effective statement, or will he choose the same line as Tony Blair, sit back, do nothing, and let the misery just continue to pile up? Prime Minister. Oh, Mr Speaker, as we've been clear, the Horizon scandal is a terrible miscarriage of justice, and we're doing everything that we can to make it right. Uh, to what he was more broadly insinuating, let me be unequivocal from this dispatch box that COVID vaccines are safe, Mr Speaker. Now, your Member of Parliament may well have been, if you live in the UK, one of those that was poo-pooing uh, Mr Bridgen when he said safe and effective. And he may, your elected member may well have been one of the ones that were cheering when Mr Richie Sunak said the vaccines are safe. Notice he didn't say they were effective this time. But he did say they were safe. Now, let's just look at some more information on this here. Now, this is the uh, the channel where you can watch that. That's the official UK uh, Parliament channel where it's all available. Check out the link for yourself. And we also have this document called uh, Hansard, which records everything. And that's the link for that. Check it out for yourself. Can the current uh, Prime Minister think of anything he has promoted in partnership with huge business as safe and effective, but has ultimately harmed the British people? So clearly Mr Bridgen there is talking about the vaccines and he gives the Prime Minister an op uh, opportunity to uh, correct previous errors. Now, the Prime Minister here is talking about the Horizons. Now, th this Horizon scandal, there was this terrible thing where uh, postmasters were accused of theft, and it wasn't, it was the computer system. It goes way back to Tony Blair. You might have heard of him, something to do with, was it an invasion of Iraq or something like that? Something like that. Anyway, um, sticking to the point, um, th this Horizon was, uh, scandal was ignored, but recently at Volcom Clean and the, these poor innocent people who suffered uh, greatly, have been uh, completely exonerated, although not adequately compensated yet. The analogies are there. Mr Bridgen, of course, did advocate for the uh, Horizon victims in his own constituency quite strongly at the time, but again was poo-pooed as he is now. So he was, he was drawing this kind of analogy there. So the Prime Minister had this opportunity to say just a minute, but he actually said this, let me be unequivocal, so let me be unequivocal, and it's, I think when he said unequivocal, is that the point where he banged his hand down and said, this is unequivocal? And this is from the dispatch box. Now, in the UK, that means it's, it's this dispatch box that the Prime Minister talks from in Parliament. Basically, he's saying, by the authority vested in me as the British Prime Minister, uh, COVID vaccines are safe and effective. Sorry, did I cross out safe there? My mistake. Um, so, there you go. Now, I'm not just blaming... but I am crit crit critiquing Mr Sunak, of course. Unequivocally, I am. Um, I think he's wrong. But we have, a, we have a His Majesty's opposition in this country that is supposed to say, just a minute, government, let me get you in check here. So Richie Sunak, 
says something Keir Starmer, the leader of the opposition, should be on his feet in second, saying, just a minute, what about way back to the Joseph Freeman paper? What about the yellow card data? What about all the international data that shows unequivocal evidence of vaccine harms? No, nothing. J j just a hooray and they went on to the next point. So there we have it. That was the, uh, <laughs> that they were the exchanges in the British Parliament. British Prime Minister, 31st of January 2024. Let me be unequivocal from this dispatch box that COVID vaccines are safe. Unbelievable. But at least it didn't say effective. Now, just a couple of uh, lighter points now to finish off with. We did a video a few days ago. I know quite a lot of you saw it on ivermectin use in Africa. And those patients that were treated with ivermectin in Africa for the scabies are just virtually cured. I'm going to be showing some videos uh, that I've just been sent a couple of days ago. I, I might do them tomorrow. I don't think we've got time today. Um, but um, I made an error in the video, so as always, I'll come back to apologise. Um, so apologies and correction from, from John uh, about a mistake I made in that video. In this video, I wrongly say that the scabies might are insects. Uh, they are not. They are correctly classified as uh, arachnidia. Uh, this is because the adult mites have eight legs, as spiders do. Uh, so they're in the same group as spiders, not insects. And of course, even someone who's done school biology knows that uh, all well, insects have six legs. Uh, and the mites are actually 0 0.2 to 0 0.45 millimetres, not 10 times bigger, as I said. Sorry, I simply put the decimal point in the wrong place. So my apologies for that. And um, hopefully normal service will be resumed. So my mistake. Sorry if I've misled anyone. But the content of the video uh, and the video is, of course, absolutely valid, totally valid. Ivermectin, uh, in combination with hygiene and cleaning the clothes, basically eradicated the wretched curse of scabies from that family. And w with many others, that's just one we chose to video from our community health project in, in Africa. Now, I'm going to read a couple of the comments from that video. Now, as we've said before, there's a whole qualitative research project in looking at these video comments, if anyone bothered to do it. But I'm just going to read out a couple of comments on the uh, from the Ivermectin and Scabies video. Now, this says, um, um, I'm not going to read out the names of the commentators, but you, you can look at it. They're all there. They're in the public domain. During the pandemic, I caught the Delta version of the SARS coronavirus 2 and was very sick. Strangely, I contacted Scabies the same week, not wanting to infect my doctor. I phoned my doctor and managed to get a prescription of ivermectin. A day later, I was better. So, excellent. Glad to hear that. It's a very strange coincidence getting Scabies and uh, Delta variant all at the same time. Although I must say, personally, I do keep ivermectin in the house just in case I get Scabies. Another one here, um, my brother, Dr. William Colby, started the ivermectin distribution program in the Congo Basin in the 1980s. One billion doses and not one complaint. Now, this is doses given to human beings, not to horses, not to cows, to human beings, a billion doses and uh, not one complaint, according to this comment. I have noticed that there is absolutely no COVID in the COVID base and not even in the Goma refugee camp where there is TB and starvation. Nothing to see here. I can't possibly comment, of course. But um, congratulations to Dr. William Kobe for starting the ivermectin distribution, distribution program in Congo in the 1980s. And there's many other comments. I'm just going to give you the gist of one of them. Again, I'm not just I'm, I'm just reporting what's been commented. Don't know if they're true or not, can't tell. It's just comments, but they're in the public domain. You can read them for yourself. Um, I've had long COVID and have been on oxygen at five litres for two years. 24-7. Um, and at some point, uh, this commentator says, I found some 12, mil 12 milligram tablets of ivermectin. And in 24 hours, my oxygen saturation levels rose to pre-COVID -code levels. My mind cleared overnight from the fog. My ears are ringing and improving. My eyesight has improved. Today, I went to my old doctor to show him your video. He already was ahead of me. He prescribed 40 milligrams uh, a day for two weeks. But I told him I would like to try 20 milligrams per day because 12 milligrams rocked my world and increased the level if needed. Um, 
a little more detail about the individual there. This has been a miracle in my life. No machine, day or night, and I assume he was referring to the oxygen concentration machine. Um, and he also refers to some personal tragedy. So th- 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 they're, they're in the comments there. Now, of course, I have no idea whether they're correct or not. They're just comments. And whatever you do, do not take medicines based on what we say on this um, channel. We do not prescribe. You need to go to your doctor for that. But interesting that those things are in the comments. And again, congratulations to Dr. William Kobe for his brilliant work in the Congo, eradicating things like uh, river blindness and uh, uh, elephantiasis, the massive swelling of the limbs, the terrible blindness, and of course, huge range of other parasitic diseases. And now almost certainly uh, either ivermectin eradicating um, scabies uh, as well. Although scabies keeps cropping up because people keep getting reinfected. So there we go. Uh, Let me know what you think of the British Prime Minister's comments. And um, we'll leave it there. Thank you for watching.